Hey, my name's Hawken, and I'm a relatively new birder. And to make birding even more fun, I set myself a challenge to see every single bird in this Birds of Utah field guide this year. With only nine species remaining, I head to the Bear River Migratory Bird Refugee in hopes of finding a few more. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am at the Bear River Migratory Bird Refugee. I'm super excited. We're camping here overnight actually. Well, camping near here. You can't camp at the Migratory Bird Refugee. We're gonna bird tonight up until sunset when we have to leave the auto tour loop. And then we're gonna go tomorrow again early in the morning. The main goal this time, we're trying to see that American bittern. So wish me luck. Let's have some fun. Let's go see what bird species we can find. So here at the Bear River Migratory Bird Refugee, you can do a 12 mile, might be 13 mile auto tour loop all along the river up until it feeds towards the Great Salt Lake. It's a really awesome place to find all sorts of bird species because you get to literally drive along this amazing stretch of river, which is great habitat for bird species. We're up here in the watchtower right now, right at the beginning, we're about to start our drive and our auto tour. So let's go have some fun. Our evening was starting off with some really great birds. I absolutely love those pheasants in the way and that was really cool. Then we came across a huge group of swallows which has been really common for me as of late kind of funnily enough. If anyone knows what they're doing here as they're splashing in the water let me know. Are they grabbing bugs? Are they washing off? Are they doing something else? Let me know if you know what this behavior is in the comments. I'm not familiar. Now one thing that's great about this refugee but also makes it tough to bird is the huge groups of ducks and shorebirds off in the distance. They can be hard to ID at such long distances and I really wish I had a scope. We're gonna pause and take a look at the specific group of birds though because this is important. So the two larger birds to the right side of the screen are both white-faced ibis. The one right behind them I can't really tell but the one almost directly in the middle with the more crimson color is a cinnamon teal. To the left of it though, pay special attention because that is one of my challenge birds. That's a blue winged teal. I'm so happy to get that one off the list and count it for the challenge. The other duck to the left of it I believe is a mallard, but the highlight is 100% that teal I needed. Man, I'd love to get the tripod out more and post up at a couple of spots watching for birds off in the distance and such, but there are so many mosquitoes out right now. I don't know if it's just because it's this time of year thing or we're just here at sunset and that's the worst time for them, but man, they are not fun to go out into. We're doing a lot of birding from the car, just rolling down the window, getting some shots of these birds, looking at them through the binoculars, adding them to my list, which is still great. It's hard to complain. This is just such a beautiful area with a ton of different species. For a split second, I thought I got my American bitter in that evening too, but this looks more like a juvenile black crown night heron to me. Let me know if you disagree though. And as the night wrapped up, we finished up our auto tour loop, driving along these beautiful roads along the river with the perfect sunset backdrop. Wow, beautiful. 
You can see the sun setting behind me. We just had to finish up early. We weren't able to stick around for too long because you have to leave before the sun sets. So we will spend some more time here tomorrow. No bittern yet, but I am eager and hopeful that tomorrow will bring us the bird we're looking for. So make sure to stick around to see us birding at dawn. For anyone curious about the camping setup when we adventure, I do have a tent, but when we go camping, we live in luxury. So this is the setup in the back of my SUV. Works pretty well for both Alicia and I, and here was the dinner we had after birding that evening. But anyways, on to day number two. Good morning, we are back at the bird refugee. You can think of last night as the appetizer. We were cut for time, so we kind of had to go through it quickly. Today we have a lot more time to stop and admire a lot of the species we are seeing out here. So we're gonna hopefully find that American bittern, but also see a lot of cool other species along the way too. Same story as yesterday though, the mosquitoes are awful, which is why I'm filming this intro in the car. So we're kind of limited into here for as much as possible. I'll try and get out a few times with the tripod and get some really good shots of some species, but even with the mosquitoes, it should be a good day. It was gearing up to be a great morning. The birds were out. I haven't got a marsh run on camera, if only briefly, because they stay so far in the reeds. Then off in the distance, we had a beautiful great egret. This is what we're dealing with. Every time get out of the car, about 15 mosquitoes come in following me. If you look off in the distance, there's even more ducks and huge rafts than I saw yesterday. It was unreal how many there were. Thankfully our target American bittern would likely not be out in these groups, and if it was, it would be a different size than most of these and it would be pretty easy to pick out. Throw my coat as an extra layer of defense from the mosquitoes. You can just see them, they're everywhere. I love this area looking for birds, but it just makes me want to scope even more. There's just probably hundreds of ducks off in the distance. If I had a scope, I could actually go look out and see those, but unfortunately I don't, so I'm just gonna have to call them ducks. <laughs> just a beautiful morning, even with the mosquitoes. It's hard to get down. So I lost my footage reacting to it, but I actually saw the American bittern, though I didn't get my camera on it quick enough before it disappeared back into the reeds after flying right in front of my face. It was making distinctive squawking calls. I stayed around waiting for it to come up again and maybe fly further away, though I didn't end up seeing it again, sadly. That still counts for the challenge, though, and I'm happy I got that one. Well, I've checked out this spot for about 20 minutes now. We're gonna have to move on. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to get shots of that American Bittern for you, but still super pumped to get that off the list. That one's a big relief, that's for sure. Another species that isn't spotted very frequently October and onward, and again, this spot that I'm at right now, it's about an hour and a half drive for me, so they're not have to come back up here, is a weight off my chest for sure, and we can focus on some of the other species on the list. Even though I got my Bittern, make sure to stick around because there's plenty of other great species to see on this trip. Let's enjoy some birds. Another bird I've always wanted to film was the marsh wren. They sound like little chattery mice, honestly, and I can hear them everywhere along here, but none of them will pop out and give me good looks. Apparently they're pretty secretive, skulky birds. They'll stay low down in the reeds. I just really want one to pop up.
I spent some extra time with this Northern Harrier because it was so close to the road. It was really cool to observe. Because it was so close, I tried to get some photos of it. Most of them didn't end up turning out, but there were a few I did end up liking as it was hovering just above the grass. Well, that is gonna conclude the adventure, American Bittern off the list, let's go. Beautiful time at the Bear River Migratory Bird Refugee, but gotta head back home now. Thank you as always for watching my videos and I will see you in the next one.